Hey everyone, just wanted to let you know that I bought an invisibility cloak and I've used it in this uh, scene. Ah, eh, no, not really. Well, how did I do it in Final Cut Pro? I'll show you right now in this movie. Take a look. So what do we need to create this cloaking effect? Okay, first of all, you need some background. I'm using something from an Injustice uh, video game. You can use anything you want. It doesn't have to be something graphical, it could be something real life that you shot as well. And then you need two parts that you shot in front of a green screen. And all you need is a subject that plays as if they're pulling the cloak on top of themselves. Like this. And another shot where you do the opposite. So you take it off of yourself. You don't need to shoot yourself walking around in the scene because all of that is behind the cloak, right? Okay, so first thing we need to do is very simply take care of our green screen effect. So I have this green screen preset which includes both the keyer and the mask effect. If you want to know how I create a preset, check out my channel. I have another video which explains that. So let me quickly add the mask points. I'm not moving too much so I don't have to worry that uh, anything will be outside of the mask. Uh, let's sample this green color so it will be cleaner. And let's do one more thing already right now. I'm going to uh, change the scaling and adjust the Y position so it will be something more realistic that fits the scene. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and paste it to the other one. So Shift Command V and I want the cure, I want the draw mask and I want the position, I changed the Y position here and I want the scale. So paste all of those and that is excellent. Actually I can turn down the volume of those two clips. All right, excellent. Now I'm going to change the X position of the first one to start all the way on the left and I'll change the X position of the second one to be all the way to the right. Okay, now how do we add a cloak? Okay, first thing we do is we copy the background scene and we want to paste it on top. So I'm going to paste it and then lift it up on top of everything. So I put it right on top and now uh, we can only see this background image. I'm going to reduce this volume completely and now we're going to add a mask to the top layer. Now to help me see where I am, I'm going to temporarily uh, reduce the opacity of the front layer. Okay, and now I can see myself. All right, I'm going to go to the end where I finished putting up the cloak, somewhere here, and I'll start to draw the different uh, dots of my mask. Okay, I want to cover my body completely. You can add more points or fewer points. The more points you add, it may look a little bit more realistic, but it's also going to be more work. So now I'm not going to add too many points because I want this to be a quicker video. The bottom point should be somewhere where your feet are. And again, it can go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. You have to cover your body completely. And once you have that, your mask is complete on one end. Okay, now you make sure the top layer is selected. And we want to keyframe those control points. So I have here all those points that I've created, I have 11 in my case. Now we don't need to go uh, one by one. I just set a keyframe for all the control points. And now we're going to start to do some work. So I'm going to go backwards with my uh, arrows. And each time that my body is moving, I'm going to move those points to fit my movement. Okay, if you think you have an actual cloak, some cloth that's shaped around your body, make sure the top points are always together with your hands. I have to keep the order of these points where the top one remains on top and the bottom ones remain at the bottom. Okay, I'll fast forward a little bit uh, because this is a little bit tedious, okay, but the result is well worth it. At some point you're going to have all these uh, masking points that will have to line up all the way at the bottom. That's okay, that's exactly what you want. Okay, so all the cloth is just lying there on the floor and that's exactly the effect that we want to get. Okay, let's take a look. 
Okay, I think if you have a few more uh, points, it may be a little bit more realistic, but that's fine for us for now. Now I want to move myself under the cloak to the other side. And now we have to make sure that we go to the last keyframe here that exists for this clip. And that's actually the one where we started with. Because from now we're going to move the cloak from the left of the screen to the right side. Now for that we're going to use the transforms settings here and change the X and just a little bit of the Y. And so let's set the first keyframe for that. And now we're going to jump ahead just a little bit and change the X position. Okay, we can move the Y a little bit also just to make it more realistic. And we can slightly move just a few points here and there. Again, to give a feel as if it's really moving. Okay, I'm moving my playhead a little bit further. And let's continue moving it on the scene. Okay, tiny change. Once again, I move it further in the scene. Again, I make a few changes. Let's put one more here. Okay. Now the next one, we're going to have to put it right where you see the person removing the cloak once again. So I have to find the correct spot somewhere here. I move the mask to coincide exactly with where the body stands. Okay, so I have to put it down, something like this. Make sure that the points are again covering the body. And now, once again, I'm going to use the arrow keys and every now and then move forward and move those control points to reset the keyframes as I'm removing the cloak. Okay, so I'm going to once again fast forward and continue once I finish setting all those key points. Okay, once we're done, now let's set the opacity back to 100% and let's see what we got. Okay, promise we don't see anything right now and we want to give a feel that the cloak is right there okay but before we do that but first we're going to fix a few parts right when the cloak is all the way on top uh, the clock starts moving but the green screen part is still there so you can still see it right here and the same thing happens when we're back okay so that's very simply done Let's show video animation and we see the last keyframe here. So I can actually shorten the green screen effect to this spot and shorten it here to this spot. Okay, now let's take a look. Excellent. And over here. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, now how do you make it so that you can see the actual cloak moving? So actually what we need to do is to make it look different from the background. And for that, you can do several things. I'm going to do uh, just a few tiny tricks. One is to change the scaling a tiny bit. So instead of 100%, I'll set it to 104. Okay, and now if we take a look, okay, you can see something moving already. Okay, but it's not enough. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of a Gaussian blur. Okay, and I'll set this to just 5%. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, you can see it already better. But I'm going to do even more than that. I'm going to add a glow effect. Okay, and now it's lighter than the rest. Okay, so now... Let's take a look. Ah, not bad, huh? Now I use very few points, so the cloak looks a little bit pointy. You can use more points and also use the Bezier tool to make it look more rounded. But that's the main idea. Now obviously we can make it look a little bit brighter. Okay, and apply the same thing to the other side. So I just want to copy the color correction right now. And I think we're done. So let's take a look. Okay, so I think that's excellent. Again, you can invest a little bit more work in it to make it look even better. But that's how you accomplish an invisibility cloak effect in Final Cut Pro 10. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
check out our other videos and please subscribe to this channel. Also, check out our website to see everything else we do and to get discounts for any of my courses. If you have any questions or would like us to cover a specific topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. See you next time!